What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the Bench Guys for another episode of Ben Builds with Joe and our 148 scale F40 1 Skyray. Today, we're going to go ahead and jump back on the Skyray, and I want to go ahead and start working on decals. Decals are something I absolutely love applying, it's going to really bring life to the model, so I'm pretty excited about that. I do have to, first off, though, come back and I want to do a little bit of touch up paint here on the bottom of the aircraft with insignia white. It looks a little too blotchy for my liking, so I want to come back in and just kind of blend everything out, make sure it's nice and uniform. Of course, leaving a little bit of that pre-shade in there as well. So I want to go ahead and just see what I can do with that. I'll use Insignia White, I'll thin it out, and I'll overcoat everything to make sure that the wheel covers and the fuselage and the wings and all that blend in nicely. Now, I did want to talk real briefly about references. Now, I've been using this book right here, and this is a fantastic book. I'm absolutely loving it. It's got a lot of good information. It's got some great pictures. It's got some good line drawings, and it's a pretty decent book. But I was poking around on Amazon the other day, and I ran across this book right here. I'm pretty sure this is a reprint of my previous book, but it has extra pictures, different pictures, I might add, and details and whatnot. So this is actually a really cool book. Basically, though, the same in terms of text, in terms of the actual design and story, has a whole section just about the models as well, which the other book does not have. You notice the back covers are pretty much the same. Like I said, I think it's a reprint, to be honest. Normally, they want 50 bucks for this, and I got it for 30, which is very nice. They say it's slightly used. It's in very good condition. So I'm very happy about that, and I think having multiple references is going to be a good thing, especially especially if I ever decide to build another Skyray, which to be honest, I actually might. But let's go ahead and move on to our first time lapse, guys. I want to go ahead and get cracking on this. I'm going to get the insignia white out. And I want to go ahead and really thin it out and give a nice blending coat to the undersurface of the aircraft. I want to paint up the wheel hubs. I want to go ahead and install all the wheels. I want to get that nav pack painted up. And then, of course, I want to hit this with the gloss coat and see how that goes. So let's go ahead and dive in here, guys. Let's get it cracking. Let's have some fun. All right, everybody. So we are back and I had a little trouble with that last little bit of gloss coat. I don't know what had happened because I came out here to check the progress after like six or seven hours and the whole thing had orange peeled and frosted over. Might have been too much humidity in the air. I might not have cleaned my airbrush well enough before I applied my future because in the last 20 years of using future, I've never really had an issue with it. And for some reason this time, it just really went weird on me and I don't really know why. So what I ended up doing is I real quickly took a very light grit sandpaper and I went over the entire air craft, just bringing down any of that little bit of orange peel. And then I reapplied paint where I needed to. And then I overcoated it with this time a Mr. Hobby aqueous gloss coat. And that I thought would be a little bit better, but even that ended up doing a little bit of orange peel effect. So I ended up sanding that down once again, just to take the edges out. And I hit it with one more shot of future. I don't really know what had happened, but we're good. We're moving past it. We've got the future on there. It is basically ready to go. So now we're going to jump into our last time lapse here for the day. We're going to apply all of our decals and we're going to see how this goes. Like I said, I don't really know what happened, but we've come out the other side and our aircraft is ready for decals. Let's see how this bird looks all dressed up.
All right, everybody, we are back. And I gotta say that that worked out beautifully. Whatever I did on that last gloss coat made this a very, very shiny, shiny aircraft. And the decals went down without any major problem. We've got everything looking pretty decent. I've let it dry for about an hour or two. Everything looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a very sharp X-Acto knife. We're gonna trim off certain areas where we have some overhang for the decals. And really those are around the wing tips and the trailing edge of the tail. We have these band decals and they don't really fit as well as I would like them to so they do have a bit of an overhang but this way I can go ahead and just slice off that overhang and I can come back and go ahead and paint those edges so you don't really notice them. Now for the red we're going to use some basic Mr. Hobby aqueous red. That's going to be a perfect match for the decals. And all I'm going to do is basically just use a tiny tiny brush use a little bit of that red color. We're going to go around each of the wing tips and the different areas there on the tail both the leading edge and the trailing edge. I'm also going to go ahead and paint that little antenna that sticks out the back of the tail. I'm going to paint that red as well because my references show that to be red. So I'll make sure to get that here. I'm also going to paint the very top of the little rudder that I cut out of the tail. We're going to go ahead and paint the top of that red as well just to make sure it all nicely matches up. So I think this is going to look great. Now for the blue, that's going to be a little bit of a different issue because the blue itself is not a standard blue. It doesn't look like a sea blue, doesn't look like a medium blue, intermediate blue, doesn't look like a basic blue from Tamiya. So it doesn't look like any blue I have. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try to mix up something to give at least the approximate shade of this kind of darker blue. We're going to use some Tamiya flat blue and I'm going to mix it up with some Mr. Hobby aqueous sea blue. Use a little bit of sea blue with a lot of the regular Tamiya blue just to kind of shift that shade down just a little bit and darken it so it matches the blue here on the stars and bars. So I think if we can match that, we'll be in good position. Plus, these are such small little areas that need to be touched up. You're not really going to notice it, to be honest. As long as it's close enough and it's an approximate shade of blue, we're fine with it. So once I get this straightened out, we're going to apply that just on the leading edges of the wings, the trailing edges of the wing tips, of course, and then the front and the rear of the tail, just to make sure that we have everything nice and uniform and looks like a one complete band from front to back. I suppose I could have gone out and purchased a blue that would be the right color, but I don't really want to waste more time trying to find the correct paint. This way I can mix up something, and as long as it's in small amounts, you're not really going to be able to tell that it's a slight difference in shade of blue. Now, of course, for the white, that's super easy because it's just basically Tamiya flat white. No problem there. We're going to take some white. We're going to go ahead and touch up the exact same areas there on the wingtips and the leading edge and trailing edge of the rudder, and we're good to go. So no problem there. Let's just get that wrapped up and move on to the next stage. Now let's talk a little bit about ordnance here, guys. I'm not really sure yet whether I want to go ahead and use the rocket pods on the very last pylons on the wings. I do want to go ahead and see if I can't use the Sidewinder missiles, however. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and just put these two together. Now, I don't really know much about Sidewinder missiles. I don't know if these are early designs or late design missiles. I really don't know. I'm going to have to look up some references to get the color pattern down on these because I'm not really sure that Tamiya calls them out correctly. There's just not a lot to them. We also have to go ahead and install the fins. And luckily, since it's a Tamiya kit, they fit pretty Pretty easily into the basic missile itself. So that's not going to be that hard to go ahead and do. But again, I need to figure out what colors to use for the tip and for the bands around the middle of the missile. That's just something that I don't know much about. So that's going to be next episode, guys. I just want to go ahead and assemble these and get them ready so that next episode we can come back and we can doctor them up and make them look a little bit better and then eventually attach them there to the underwing pylons. But that's about it, guys. I think we're pretty good for today. I've gone ahead and put on all the decals that we can have here on the Skyray. Looks pretty cool. Everything is nice and glossy. We need to go ahead and next episode, come back, start doing some weathering, tone everything down, attach all the ordnance and whatnot. But I think we're really moving on here and I think it's looking pretty cool. I will make mention, though, of a couple of issues I've had so far. The decals don't seem to be 100% complete. As you see here, there's this little black square, this little rectangle. I had to go and actually source that off of another decal sheet for, I think, an A4 Skyhawk, one of my excess decal sheets that I've kept all these years. So that I had to add on. I will also mention that we are missing one of the names for the pilots right up here at the front of the nose, and I just happened to find some writing that looked approximately like that. So I went ahead and used a little artistic license and pulled that off of another decal sheet and applied it there. If you do build this one, be careful of these decals here on the drop tanks. They do tend to kind of splinter apart. And then, of course, the missiles, we need to figure out how to paint up these sidewinders and just figure out what I need to do to make them look a little bit better. So we're getting there, guys. We're not quite there, but we're getting there. Make sure to go check out Joe's channel. I know his Skyray is looking fantastic, and I think he's basically done with it. So I don't know if he's posted an update in a while, but his Skyray was looking awesome. So make sure to go check out his channel. Next episode, we're going to come on back. We're going to go ahead and overcoat everything with a nice gloss coat to make sure those decals stay nice and safe. 
We'll do a little bit of streaking here and there, and we'll just have some fun, get this thing weathered up, attach all the different parts and pieces, and we will go ahead and be able to call this one finished. So until then, guys, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here on episode number 10 for the finale of Ben Bills with Joe Season 8 and the F4D-1 Skyray by Tamiya. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you soon.